Ricky Martin sued by former manager for breach of contract. So the former manager, Rebecca Drunker, is suing him for $3 million for commissions she says he owes her. Now, I have the complaint. Okay, Uh we're going to jump into this really fast because it's kind of interesting. And the first thing I want to say and kind of preface with this is that I don't know the answer to these questions, but I have questions. The first being, when it comes to being his manager, what does that mean, right? So for example, you know, I was familiar with Pitbull and his team for a period and at the applicable period, Pitbull had like eight managers. Okay, so if you have eight managers, there's one guy who's kind of the personal manager, the other's the business manager, the other's the tour manager. So when you just say you're a manager, what does that mean? Because Mm -hmm. she's coming out and she's saying, and we'll go through it in the complaint where she's talking about she's, you know, owed millions and millions of dollars. Now, I'm not saying that that's not the case. I'm not saying and trying to, you know, throw shade, but I'm just curious because there is no contract and that's number one. Okay, so let's look at this really fast. So in the complaints for damages here, it goes complaint for damages. She these are the claims, right? She wants breach of contract because there was an oral contract, um, breach of implied uh, covenant of good faith and fair dealing um, it, and a number of other ones having to do with, you know, he basically made profits because of my services. He had all of these benefits because of my participation in his project. So what was kind of interesting, and I'm just going to read this, okay? You can give me your thoughts. So Rebecca saved Ricky's career. So Ricky Martin in in <laughs> is is a world famous singer song songwriter. What an opening line! Actor. What an opening well, line! It, it gets better. Rebecca is a talent manager who initially represented him from 2014 to 18. In tw- May of 2020, with his personal and professional life in absolute turmoil, Martin begged Rebecca to come back and represent him as his manager. Okay, so I'm given the impression that she was asked to be his personal manager. As a personal manager, industry standards that managers get between 15 to 20 percent of gross revenues. Okay, so you know, obviously that's a big payday if you're a personal manager. But that goes back to my initial question of what was she doing? Because she's like, I was his, uh, you know. Uh, mentor and I was saving his career and let's you know let me let me put it in her words so she agreed and resurrected his career <laughs> in every way she provided him with invaluable services as his manager and top advisor she guided him on his recording contracts tour sponsorship deals and other professional endeavors she worked tirelessly for him including on his recent North American tour with Enrique Iglesias with Rebecca at his side, he made millions of dollars and therefore owes Rebecca substantial commissions. Okay, so that's to claim that he hasn't paid her almost. I don't know if that's the case. Um, and then just moving on. So she's fiercely protected him when he was threatened with a potentially career ending allegation in September of 2020. Rebecca advised him and brought it to top litigation counsel to handle the matter. And that's funny. That's like, I I say this jokingly, right? So if that orco does something great, I don't need to give him credit. I'll be like, oh, you did good because I chose you. <laughs> so like, you know, she's taking credit for what someone else did. No, she's like, like I found that person. <laughs> did she, did she take care of like his meal prep too? Like she's taking credit for like everything. She's like, I'm the one that got his fucking workout routine. <laughs> I got his And maybe abs. she did. And maybe she she did. Let's go back. Turned to water to wine. Martin emerged unscathed and protected with his professional resurgence. Now set to play a lead role in the highly anticipated TV series, Mr. and Mrs. American Pie. So she did a lot of great things. There's just one problem. That's kind of weird. That's kind of weird legal <laughs> drafting, guys. I'm not going to lie. There's just one problem. Martin completely. So yeah. I mean, you know, again, there's many a ways that you can draft a complaint. There's some language in here that's a little odd to me. That, that I typically wouldn't see, but that's okay. Let's get to it. Martin completely maliciously refused to pay her the millions of dollars in commissions that he owed under his management agreement. Bias flagrant, breach of contract. Uh, you know, he she gave him loyalty, dedication, exceptional service. What's worse, Martin forced a toxic work environment wherein he constantly mistreated, manipulated, and lied to Rebecca, forcing her to resign as manager in April of 2022. So now he's threatening and attempting to force her to sign an agreement with a non-disclosure clause. Shouldn't that I mean, have been it done sounds in the like, beginning? It sounds like, what was that? Shouldn't that have been done at the initial hiring, a non-disclosure? Like well, what? so it's a, so what she's saying, there was never an actual contract. 
executed that it was a oh. verbal agreement. Now, guys, especially when it comes to representing big artists like this, you would hope that there would be a contract, but it's any artist manager relationship. Make sure you have a contract. I have a free template that I include with my book just so you guys can have it because it's such a big deal. If someone's taking 20% of your gross income and you're not going to have a contract with that person, mm. that this kind of goes back to what I was saying with, I find it very odd if she was his personal manager entitled to, let's say that 20% and there's no contract, but that does happen. Some of these kind of old school cats will but, be I like, mean, oh, I don't do contracts. But I mean, she's, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe she even drafted the letter herself because of just how um, <clears throat> filled with venom it kind of seems. And it seems like, uh, I don't know, just sometimes you'll read these, you'll read these, and this one just seems a lot more casual <laughs> so than, than some of the other wordings of things that you're doing. <laughs> Yeah. So then let me just kind of uh, just point out a couple of things. So here she like, say what he lied about. about. Well, let's get to that. So the parties, the jurisdiction, and then the general allegations. So um, this kind of talks about the different projects um, when they met. Uh, they had a great, you know, relationship. They did all these great things together. You know, and again, if she was serving as his in any capacity. Right. So so, you know, whatever type of manager that she was. She's she's drafting this or her attorney is drafting this in such a way I'm being led to believe that he never paid her in all of these years. Right. So for, for four years straight, they took a break and then they did another two years together. OK, how can she be a great manager if she doesn't know to have a contract with her client? She has all these. OK, other so so here I haven't gone through this entire complaint, so I'm catching stuff as we go through right okay. now. In, on page six, it goes, in exchange for her services, he agreed to pay her 5% of all gross income. Okay, so that answers my question. She was not his general manager, but she was some other kind of manager. So she's claiming it was 5%, so to be of all projects that were produced, negotiated, for of which Rebecca performed services during the term. Okay, so then she's saying it wasn't even for everything, right? So most managers, they're like, I don't even care if I have anything to do with this aspect of your career. If you make money, I'm your general manager, I get paid. So she's saying it was 5% and it was only from stuff that I touched. So that that's where kind of my, my questions are getting answered a little bit. It sounds like it was a less formal of a relationship and she had maybe a lesser role. Um, but again, I don't want to- But she's, cla she's, she's, claiming, she's claiming she was it. She was, th she's, she's the reason. reason. That's true. That's true. So, um, you know, as it relates to kind of what's happening right now, Ricky has not responded, right? So what happens is after someone files a lawsuit, a complaint, then in this case, Ricky, he has a chance to respond and answer all of these allegations and potentially counter suit. So we don't know if that's going to happen here, but that is what she is claiming. Very interesting. And then um, that is interesting. Thoughts. We usually kind of hear about, um, like, you know, when we're hearing these cases, it's the other way around. Like the manager has stolen a bunch of money from the artist or, you know, the accountant has stolen a whole bunch of money. You don't really, I don't, I don't feel like I've heard a lot of times where the manager hasn't been paid because the manager usually has contracts in place to make sure that they're the first ones getting paid. That's the way it always seems to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then the last piece I'll just kind of add on top of that. So this is the breakdown. So she goes during the term of the management agreement. Here's the stuff that I'm entitled to. There was an elite talent uh, management agreement. She was she's owed her five percent would have been fifty thousand dollars or fifty five. There was another talent agreement um, from that she would have received two hundred forty thousand in commissions. Um, and so if you kind of go through this, right, so we have some pretty big ones here, right? A Live Nation tour. She believes she was entitled yeah. to four hundred thousand oh, dollars. A Sony recording contract, five hundred thousand dollars. I mean, guys, you know the other thing too is that sometimes, you know, unless you are the general manager, you're not going to be getting a cut of everything unless you everything, right. unless you did the unless you actually did the it's Sony the contract, right? Like, so if you're not the general manager, that's where I think that she's going to run into some problems. 
She should have. She really. She really should have. Um, you know, if there's this, if if it's on even on the level of the relationship, because I mean, she's just saying they had that relationship. He could have just. I, I don't. I don't know, but I'm just saying, like you know, in that contract, she could have had. She could have had that sunset clause in there. <laughs> you know, That's a right. nice little, little nice little sunset clause. Sip it, sip it some margaritas with the sunset clause. Yeah, so this is going to be an interesting one. I thought it was worth kind of touching on because for all of you, you know, creators, influencers, you're going to find someone to help represent you at some point to be your manager. Make sure you have a contract and make sure it's very clear when it comes to the money because you can have what's called an exclusion. So you say manager's entitled to get this percentage from my entertainment career, but we are excluding all this stuff, right? So for example, a lot of artists um, make their own merch. Right. So mm. if you're making your own merch and paying for your own merch, your manager should not be getting a piece of what you did on your own. So if that's point. not on the contract. Great point. And you know, the thing of it is um, just like with everything else, like with recording, just artists, when you're thinking about signing with anybody, when you're thinking about, I mean, not even just with a record label, but when you're thinking of signing with management, we always talk about on this channel how much you need to know the roles that you want the management and you want the record label to provide. You should know how to do those things yourself. You know, it's involved. And especially when it comes to merch, you know, it's not like it was when it used to be. You can get, you can go online, you can find companies that can help you manufacture your merch for you. You know, it, you can you can cut good deals from it. You can, you know, collect the money yourself. You don't really need labels for a lot of the things that you think that you need labels for. Some of the things you can you can really well, actually all of the things you can really do yourself to you know a great extent and just don't be afraid don't be afraid to do that and don't be afraid when you're looking at your contracts with your managers or with anybody to take them to somebody to an entertainment attorney and change the things that you don't like if something doesn't sit right with you there's no real industry standard the industry standard is what you set for yourself I think Alicia Keys said that uh, Alicia Keys did this fantastic interview where she was just talking about no I set what my standard is, you know, cause her, you know, agents and stuff are requesting, you know, all this money because the industry standard. she's like, no, okay, well then you're going to have to go because I pay what I pay. This is what it's worth to me. If you want to come, come on this train, let's do it. Otherwise. And so know your worth. Absolutely. Yes. And there are, there are some industry standard things, but I think you make a really good point that you can say, I don't care what industry standard is. This is how we're going to do it.